How do you start to do something in an opera? It makes Lord of the Rings seem quite pedestrian. We'd never uh, thought that we would ever do an opera. We probably haven't done an opera. We've just done something that kind of sort of has elements of opera within it, but it's also kind of it's got electronica, it's sort of it's got an element of Saturday morning kids' TV, it's, um, there's kung fu, there's incredible acrobatics. We were approached four years ago by a man called Alex Poots from the, Internet, the Manchester International Festival, who said, would we like to um, work with um, a famous Chinese opera? director and do uh, a version of Monkey, Journey to the West, which was a story that um, we were both familiar with from our childhood. Well, our first impression uh, was simply Monkey, great. That was the program we watched when we were 11 year olds, um, because in, in, in Britain, we had um, a very popular show called Monkey, that had been made uh, in the 70s in Japan. It had really bad English overdubs and was very kitsch, but it was a lot of fun. We were interested straight away, because we remembered, remembered the story very well, we remembered the characters very well, imprinted on our brains. So, so we said, yeah, we're, we're interested, but you need to uh, fly us to China and um, give us a guided tour. So we went to China, we met with Shi Zheng, the director, and we travelled with him around rural China for a few weeks. And we decided that we wanted to do the project. We, we, we connected with him, we liked him, we thought he was a very interesting character. And I, I have to sort of emphasise that he, he took us over. He was our guide through the whole thing. Um, he took us down to the southern provinces where the Dong and the Miao people live, um, which is an incredibly beautiful exotic place, uh, not the China that, that, that any of us have, have seen, and let's face it, the China that we, that we knew up until a few years ago was one which really um, was seen through, through the window of an uh, uh, insane red-coloured army displays in Tiananmen Square once a year. You know, in the West we have a certain arrogance, which we're not even aware of, I don't think, where, you know, we, we really assume that everyone's kind of moving towards being like us or, or, or is like us, where, 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 whereas China really does its own thing. And we did say that it's the first time, well, the first time I've ever worked on a project that a, 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 a classic story that already exists, where in fact you don't actually have to write anything, it's there, it's already been done, it's been done many, 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 yeah, many you, you times. Get, you get to an age where you, where, where you do start gravitating towards sort of 
great stories that have already been written. <laughs> and then putting your spin on it. And if it's something that you, you're really into and you, you, you respect and you love, then, then, yeah, then it's very enjoyable. Yeah, you understand it and, and then you just become part of, 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 of a bigger thing and that's nice, you know, because the older you get, the more you realise that that's actually more and much more important than yourself. The story of Monkey is uh, um, about the character Monkey. He's the Monkey King, but he decides that he wants to be immortal. He wants to be a god, and um, he basically uh, gate crashes a party in heaven, which he isn't invited to, and, and, and proclaims that he is a sage equal to heaven, he should be a god, uh, and is uh, punished and uh, banished under a mountain for 500 years by Buddha. Finally, Buddha thinks that he's kind of uh, served his time, um, and he's released on the one condition that he uh, helps accompany the uh, priest Tripitaka to northern India to uh, retrieve these um, holy scriptures. And along the way, they pick up Pigsy and Sandy, the river demon, who are also two characters who have both done something to upset the gods and have both been punished and are both given the opportunity to redeem themselves. So they set forth on this fantastic journey um, and they meet all, all manner of demons along the way and they have a wonderful adventure. So it's a journey to enlightenment. We weren't aware that it was actually a 16th century sort of political allegory that had become a classic of uh, Mandarin literature. I, th I think it was important to try and tell us in it with a sense of contemporary China in mind, and, 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 and that's what, what I tried to do when I was writing the music. When you start writing in a Chinese style, I mean, because to the Western ear, it's five notes that seem to sort of be very repetitive, and it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And I, I had a few. I had, I had a really important breakthrough where I um, I was staring at the the, the communist five point star, and then I put, put five five notes of the pentatonic scale on, on each um, point of the star, and then imagined what that might sound like if you started to rotate lots of these stars with these notes. But rotating at different at different speeds and stuff, and then out of that came came a number system, um, which helped me play around with with the pentatonic scale. It's really hard with, 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 in a Western sensibility to, to write in the pentatonic in a kind of sort of free way because it, you always end up going din 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 you know and it always sounds it sounds like how you expect Chinese music to sound but without any of the integrity I just kind of sort of recorded everything and I met lots of musicians and I and I sort of I looked at everything as being music, from car horns to the sound of elevators, and just just tried to work with that when I got back to, to London. I, I just approached it very simply. I just listened, you know, which is generally a good policy when you're making music. Just listen. <laughs> We decided that, you know, we wanted young, modern Chinese kids. They've kind of grown up with sort of bad Western music for the last five, six, seven years. So they kind of sounded a bit, a bit like Pop Idol when we first auditioned them, you know, so we had to sort of beat that out of them, so to speak.
and just make them sing in a sort of more sort of folky, natural, using the sound of Mandarin, which is which was a decision I made very early on. Why we're doing this in Mandarin? You know, we're doing this for a, a, a Western audience. We should be doing it in in English. Um, but I, I felt that that would be like sort of it would be like bad overdubbing if if we if we did in English, you know. Um, and I, I love the sound of just I, I love going into cultures where I don't actually understand a word. In fact, I find it blissful, you know, just because you. You have a certain innocence, and um, and and because you're not worried about what people are saying, you know, you listen you listen to it in a far more musical way. When I started doing all the designs for the opera, I, I once I realised that we were actually doing it, I guess I sort of started to worry about whether I could do that, whether that was something that I was capable of. And so I started going down all the wrong roads and trying to do something that wasn't me. And I would show all of my drawings to Shizheng, who would, um, who would just look at them and go, no, no. And that's all he'd say, he wouldn't really. And this happened a few times. So in a few months I'd meet with more drawings and he'd just look at them and he'd go, he'd go, oh, Pixie, no, no. But he'd never give me any feedback. So then I became quite lost. And then in the end I said to him, what am, what am I supposed to do? And he said, well, I, I want you to do what you do. That's why I asked you to do it. And I suddenly realised, of course, why am I trying to do it? A different way, I'll just do what I do. And then it was easier after that. It was just, it was just a case of doing all the drawings. There were, there were lots of drawings that were required, the costumes, the characters, the set pieces, the set designs, animation. So once I got over that stumbling block, which is kind of stupid because I shouldn't have, I should have figured that out right from the beginning. Just, just do what you do. Well, there's, there's, there's a few versions of Monkey now. There's Monkey the Opera, which is, again, as I said, with Damon, myself and uh, Xi Zheng. And, um, and then there was the Monkey Album, which is a studio version of the opera score that um, me and Damon felt it was important to do because people who, who went to see the opera came out of the opera saying, can we buy the music? Does the music exist? And it didn't. So we felt it was important to, to put that on the CD. But when Damon started working on it, it sort of, it sort of started to change slightly and it almost became a gorilla's version of Monkey. So it had a lot more sort of beats in it, it was a lot harder. And I started um, illustrating for all of the pieces of music. And so the Monkey Project sort of became our personal version of Monkey. So there was the opera, and there was me and Damon, gorillas doing a darker version. So the illustrations became a lot darker, and the music was a little bit darker, a little bit meatier. Um, and um, I didn't want to do any animation for it because I felt it needed to be live action. But I w did the record because I didn't feel that I could completely articulate what, it had, exci what had excited me so much about making music in this way. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was the combination of, of, of uh, traditional um, Chinese instruments and voices um, like the shongran, the pipa, the uh, erhu, um, combined with sort of my obsession with dodgy key analog keyboards from the 70s and, and 80s. And when you get new sounds, you get new ways of playing old music and then you get new forms of music and so that's that's what's so exciting about listening to music from a from you know from the, the east that becomes the west that becomes the east that goes to the north that becomes the south and then he bites and then you both come round
And you attack him. Okay? So one of you here, Ling Ling here, Jenny here. It's gonna look nice. So we, we, we've made this monkey bee video, which looks like a miniature film. Uh, monkey bee is a song or a piece of music from a part of the opera where a monkey meets Princess Iron Fan, which is one of the obstacles they come up against on their journey to the west, and they have to cross her, her kingdom, which is basically built on a volcano, and it's extremely hot, and they basically monkey tries to get this fan from her to fan out the flames so they can continue their journey. And um, obviously, she doesn't make it very easy for him, and he ends up fighting her and her servants and an army of thousands of volcano soldiers. Well, with Monkey Bee, that's the first live action video that I've directed. Everything else is animation, which is sort of easier, really. Well, it's not easier, but it's, it's, a, it's a room full of people sitting in front of computers or drawing. You know, you sort of walk around and sort of say, draw that hand a bit differently. But this was obviously working with a big crew of people, being on a time limit and, and having stunt coordinators and flying riggers and, and sets built. We filmed it at um, the Black Island Studios in West London on green screen with uh, characters flying around and wires fighting and, and, and all manner of strange things with, with zombie volcano soldiers coming out of the ground. And, and then we're in the process of basically putting it all together in the computer and putting all the backgrounds on and so it all looked like a, it looked like a 1970s sort of Chinese horror movie, spaghetti western musical version of Monkey. Three, three, one. I, I, I spent years sitting in a room drawing by myself, never really being talking to anybody else or seeing anybody else. And then, now I have a studio where there's lots of people asking me questions. And I've got used to that. And now I'm on a film set and there's 100 people standing around looking at me like... So you, it's just, you know, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. And then once you've done it, you realise that actually that's not so hard and that was, that was fun. We had the, the girl from the show who plays um, Yao Nin Nin, who plays Tripitaka, who is a very, very sweet girl, very gentle, very softly spoken, and, and was very apologetic, and a very sweet girl. And she got to play the part of um, one of Princess Iron Fan's servants. So she had to do loads of fighting and flying around on a, on a wire which she'd never done before. And she spent uh, a couple of hours with the stunt guy having a chat. And then suddenly she was doing this fight scene with these swords. She was incredible. And everyone was going, wow, she's done this before, right? And I go, no, she's never done this. And she was doing this incredible fight scene, putting these amazing faces. And everyone was very impressed. And then she had to double up as a zombie soldier. And we put this horrible makeup on her. And we have her walking towards camera. She's just come out of the ground, she's covered in... Yeah, and she's, and, and she, and she became the best zombie I've ever seen. And just watching her sort of adapt, you know, going from playing Tripitaka, this, this lovely sort of peaceful monk character, to being a kung fu expert and then a zombie in the space of two days. It was quite an, quite an exciting moment. He fights, and you both but at the end of the day, it's about having an idea. You attack him. And, and knowing what I want to see in the lens. How I want that framed and how I want that to be. And, and then I tell some other guy that's what I want and he makes sure it happens.
Why is Monkey relevant to uh, Gorillaz fans? Yeah. Well, I've no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. That's actually dangerous. Okay. Sorry. Bullying is. You really dangerous. squeeze too hard then. I didn't get hold of it though. Derek, just stop it. Not now. This is for National Geographic. Well, I, I didn't get hold of it. it.